Praise God, praise God. Greetings everyone and welcome to the Back to Basics Ministries online Bible study, our Wednesday night Bible study as we go through the Bible. And tonight we're studying Deuteronomy chapters 1 through 26. Let me give out a shout out to Ryan Trogler. See how Ryan's doing and, and get a sound check from Ryan. <coughs> Hey, Dr. Carter. I'm glad you're doing doing well. Praise God. And you, uh, you're sounding pretty good, loud and clear. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your prayers and give my love to Miss Tara and Miss Jenna. And are you on the road or are you at home? Uh, no, sir. I'm on the road tonight. Okay, okay. We well, drive carefully. What's the weather like in PA? Uh, right now, uh, PA in Jersey is it's, it's just a little chilly. But tomorrow night they're calling for rain and then turning into snow, possible snow. Oh, 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 <laughs> possible snow. Let me let me hop on a plane and get on up to PA to see the snow. No, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here and get get my healing. Hallelujah. Well, you all be safe. You all be safe. You, Jackie Praise says God. I'm only about seventy five percent. But Jackie, Jackie is an excellent nurse. And Dr. Jean, you trained her well. She's taking good care of me. And uh, I am so grateful to have Jackie Carter in my life. And uh, I know she would love for me to say that again. So I'm going to say that again. I'm so grateful to have Jackie Carter in my life. Praise God. Later on, Ryan, she'll probably want that in writing and um, and have, have it notarized. And if I have to do that, I'll go and do that too. Karen, so God bless you. Recording. Hmm, what you say, Jackie? It's in the recording. I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, praise God. I love you, too. I love you, too. Praise God. Karen Herzog up in Pennsylvania. You heard Ryan say snow, so you and Ryan are not too far from each other. Karen, come I on. I know. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to go away. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, praise God, praise God. I want to thank God for you, Karen, and for all of our students, every one of you. Uh, Jeep, I want to say hello to you, and couldn't answer your call earlier, and maybe we'll talk a little bit later on. It's so good to see you all. Brian, so good to see you. You all are doing so well in this, this class, and what I'm getting is, and it excites me, that uh, you're learning so much about the Bible and that's what this is all about, to take God's people through the Bible. You know, um, we, we've had a lot of uh, uh, teachings and instructions, we, words from the preachers, from the prophets and all this, and the prophets and the teachers, and a lot of people know about the Bible, a lot of people know about the Lord. And, and so... Uh, my, the one thing that's been in my heart for oh for over a year, Lord, your people are perishing. They know about you, but they don't know you. They don't know how you think. They don't know what your desires are. They don't know your word. And uh, I've gotten in trouble with a lot of pastors in in encouraging them to encourage people to go to the word, go to the word, go and study the word. Um, I, I've, I've had to pay a little bit of, of a price because of, of my insistence. Pastors teach the people what the Word of God says. Teach the people to go on. But you know, a lot of pastors, I mean, they're building their congregations and building their empires. Um, and and, and uh, they only want the people to do what they want them to do. And the pastor's not out there teaching the Bible and not encouraging people to teach the Bible, and most pastors are not going to teach people, encourage them to go and sit under some other pastor for Bible study. Isn't that right, Dr. Jean Bratton? That's the truth. And so what happens, you get, a, you get there can be friction. It's and the pastors, truth. Pastors won't, don't want anybody telling them what to do. And uh, uh, I mean, I had a very traumatic experience this year. Uh, with one pastor because I insisted, hey, you're doing a great job and all that, and I love this pastor. I said, but, you know, uh, you've got to teach people 
helped them to get to the next step. I mean, a lot of people are saying they're saved, but don't know diddly squat about the Bible. And it is, that has cost me a whole lot. But I'm rebounding and trusting the Lord that God's going to do even greater than uh, what he's done before. And I'm going to keep insisting on people. If you get saved, then you need to get in the Bible study. It doesn't have to be with me, but you need to sit under some anointed Bible teacher so that you can get the word. Because the time is going to come, and it's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming very soon where if you don't know your Bible, you're going to be in bad shape. You may know prophecy. You may know about a lot about tsunamis and earthquakes and, 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 and weather patterns and this. And a lot of people are caught up into that, but they don't know the Bible. Well, I teach the Bible. Uh, I can go to the Weather Channel and get the, the, the earthquake reports. And I can go to uh, CNN News or I can go to ABC if I want the latest news. I'm not going to take this time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to waste this precious time that God has given me. And just read current events to people. No, no, I think the ministry God has called me to is much greater than to read current events and to uh, relate current events to end times. No, I'm not going to do that. You can get current events from your local news station. But God says, and he impresses on my heart, and he keeps telling me, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge of him. And so I am going to teach the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen. This ministry. The focus on back to basics ministry. Hi Andrew. Is going to be on teaching the word of God. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach it until God calls me home. And praise God. And Dr. Gene Bratton. Guess what? What? <laughs> I'm listening. The Lord said, now we're going to go to two services on Sunday, starting in January. Two wow. services on Sunday. Praise God. And, and, and the Lord said, and one of the reasons why I want you to go to two services on Sunday, is because a lot of people need what you're teaching, what I'm giving you, and they're committed to their own local churches on Sunday. This is good. I want to support that. I want to support that. But then after you go to your local service or after you preach, Pastor, who's feeding you and, and who's That's going right. to strengthen you? And so uh, we're going to open up Back to Basics Ministries on Sunday starting in January. The first Sunday in January, we're going to two services a day, the 11 o'clock service and the 7 o'clock p.m. service. And I guarantee you that that uh, 7 o'clock service is going to take a lot of pastors and members of the body of Christ over the top because a lot of people are participating in their churches. They're going to church. They're participating in church. Many are getting burnt out in church and need to be replenished. So this 7, seven o'clock service is going to be a replenishing service. We're going to go. We're going to the well. It's like Andrew. We're going to the well. So bring your bucket and, and come on and join us 7 o'clock on Sunday. And it's going to be just to comfort God's people. God says, comfort my people. Comfort my people. Strengthen them. Build them up. So I'm looking for it. Karen, I can't wait. I, I can't wait. Terry, I can't wait. Gene Bratton, I can't wait. Uh, 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 Jackie, I can't wait. And Jackie says yesterday when I told her that uh, we're going to two services, she said, which is very practical, and I love me some Jackie Carter. Jackie said, uh, when are we going to have dinner? <laughs> what time is dinner time on Sunday? So now we've got to work out a dinner time, and we've got to make these adjustments. So pray for this. Pray that God will bless, because time is winding up, ladies and gentlemen. Time is winding up. And, and, I, I, and I look at, at my generation. Time is winding up on my generation, but the whole generation of mankind is in jeopardy. So we want to reach as many people as we can with the Word of God and teach them what the Word of God. And as you notice when, when, when I'm, I'm preaching, I'm not preaching my own theories or ideas. I'm preaching what thus says the Lord. And that's the way I, I intend to roll as God will be my strength. And we give all the glory and honor to God. I thank God for you guys. I thank God for each and every one of you. You are a blessing to my life. And I praise God. Okay, so let's get ready to... Uh, Look at 
uh, chapters 1 through 26 in the great book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy means a second uh, giving of the law. Deuter Deutero uh, means second. Anomy, the law, the second law, the second time the law is given. But actually Deuteronomy is Moses giving a, a, a praise report to the people and final instructions. This is, Moses is given his final instructions to the people. He's rehearsing the history of the last 40 years. He's giving them a rehearsal as he prepares to die and roll the ministry over to Joshua. It's, it's Moses' uh, uh, summary report and, and, and summary charge to the people as he reviews their history and gets them ready to go in to enter into the promised land. I, I love, I mean, I get goosebumps. I got goosebumps running up and down my spine right now. Just think about Moses and how God continued to use him. And this is his final, his final, his final speeches are in the book of Deuteronomy. So let's ask Jackie Carter to lead us in prayer and then we're going to uh, our study. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for bringing us up to this present point. We thank you for each one who has joined the class tonight and those who will yet to come on. We ask, Father God, that you will lead us in the way that you would have us to go and that we will be obedient to your will. We ask that you bless Pastor Carter, Father God, and anoint him to bring us the information that you have given him to share. We ask that we not only hear it, but that we will allow it to become a part of us so that we can in turn grow and share the word with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so very much for for who you are and for being such a bless <coughs> a blessing not only to me but to many many people. Okay, we're going to look at. Uh, I'll give you a chapter chapter by chapter um, summary of the contents. Chapter one, we're looking at a good report, and then Israel is defeated. Uh, there was a group in Israel. They didn't want to obey God. They decided we're going to take this land anyway. God told us to just be still and chill and pray and repent. But no, we're going to take this land. And they went out there and they got their butts kicked. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to be successful without the Lord. So chapter 1 is all about a good report. And then Israel defeated. Chapter 2, we're looking at the journey from Kadesh to to the promised land okay from Kadesh Bernia to the promised land it's a journey from the time when the uh, 12 spies returned and the people accepted the report of the majority of the spies and they grieved God and they went into unbelief and they lost their blessing and so they, they stayed there for over a year. God kept them there at Kadesh Barnea for over a year wherein they could have been in the promised land in just 11 days journey. Chapter 3, victory over Og. Uh, Moses is going to uh, lead uh, the war against Og. Actually, it was Joshua. Og, the king of Bashan. He was a, a giant. He was uh, one of the giants in the land. Og raised up his uh, ugly head and he was 13 feet tall and uh, his bed was 13 and a half feet long and 8 feet wide and uh, Og was an awesome guy that he got his due when he went up against Israel. Then we look at in verse in chapter 3 the division of the land. What we're doing ladies and gentlemen is taking a, a chapter by chapter uh, overall sum summary view of the Bible we started this in Genesis and you're getting a good overall picture of the Bible and its contents there are many Christians who do not get these instructions many are taught that they do not need the Old Testament ladies and gentlemen what would the New Testament be without the Old Testament God has a plan so read 
the entire Bible. Study the entire Bible and get a good command. When we read the Old Testament, we're looking at how God created everything and then how he separated one man and made a race of people out of one man. And it was a race of people who would honor God and obey God. Then we're talking about how these people sinned against God and disobeyed God. And yet God still would not stop loving them. He still would not uh, give up on his love for them. And um, then the whole New Testament points to God himself invading mankind in the person of Jesus Christ. And so um, we also get a look at God's heart, what he's, his desires are, his do's and his don'ts his yeas and his nays and so by studying the Old Testament we get a good command of who God is and we get a good look at what he desires of us and what he requires of us so please 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 encourage people we'll be sending out information in the next couple of weeks encourage them to join us in this Bible study as um, we get ready for the next semester which is the books of history in the Old Testament Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah and Esther if you think this is exciting wait till you get to that part chapter 4 we're looking at the faithful survive how the faithful people survive in the wilderness after 40 years we're looking at the people of inheritance. We're looking at the Lord. He is God. We're looking at the covenant recalled. How God, uh, through Moses, as Moses gives his farewell address. You could call this his farewell address. As he summarizes the history with the people. Uh, he recalls the covenant with God. Chapter 5, God's commandments. The Ten Commandments are restated. You get a duplicate, almost a duplicate, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, of what you get in Exodus chapter 20. The Ten Commandments restated. And then uh, Moses reminds them of how God spoke to them personally with his powerful voice. And the people beg God, please, please, please. They beg Moses, please tell God. Uh, uh, it's all right to talk to us, but don't talk to us personally. If, and tell God that if he has something to say to us, let him speak to you, Moses. Don't let him speak to us because, because we were terrified and we're still scared to hear his voice. Chapter 6, teach your children. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, very powerful chapter. Teach your children why we need to teach our children the word of God I praise God as as I look at families like Andrew and his family I look at uh, I look at uh, Dustina and her family I mean the, the whole family gets around the Bible and studies the Bible I look at Christian Aaron Carpenter up in Idaho uh, very few families do that but I and I see I see uh, husbands and wives uh, uh, through this ministry studying together and and family members studying together. I love it. I love it. I love it. So continue to teach your families. Chapter 7, <coughs> we're looking at a holy people and victory assured. Yes, victory is assured to all of us by the Word of God as we continue to trust and obey the Lord. Chapter 8 of Deuteronomy is all about Beware of idol worship. Beware of idol worship. Um, if I said to you, well, I'm going to say it anyway, so I'll leave the if out. In a few weeks, in a few weeks from now, we intend to close out the uh, Faith Vision series on Sunday. And that third, that third phase of the faith, faith Vision is awesome. So you need to get Sunday's message either be on live or get their, their recording. But after that, God has given me a message about the danger of idol worship in America. The danger of idol worship in America. And I'm going to make a statement in that message. And the statement is going to be, most Christians in America today are idol worshipers. Mm. 
Dr. Jean Brant, and I'm going to come out boldly in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make that Amen. statement that I just made tonight. Most Christians, that includes pastors, prophets, bishops, uh, 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 choir members, ushers, uh, Bible teachers, most Christians, I'm going to make a statement, most Christians in America are idol worshipers. Now you got to get tune in on that Sunday. It's going to be probably two weeks from now to get the, the gist of that message. And I'll, I'll give you a little hint. Most Christians today in America have gotten so far away from Jesus and what the Lord requires and we have made idols out of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. And anything our candidate says, we follow. If our candidate is wrong, we do not reprimand that candidate. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. And America is on the verge of destruction. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it again soon. America is on the verge of destruction because we choose to worship idols rather than worship God. In other words, politics has become our God. And, and political parties have become our God. And candidates, whether you're red or whether you're blue, candidates have taken the place of God in our life. I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about the ungodly. I'm talking about most Christians. They have drawn the line. Minister and they don't care what the Bible says. They have made up their choice. This is the way in which we're going to go. And ladies and gentlemen, we are on dangerous ground in America. And unless we repent, unless we repent from my house to your house, from the White House to John's house, unless we repent, we are in danger, ladies and gentlemen, of destruction. So um, God's given me this message. I'll be preaching it in a couple of weeks. It won't be popular, but it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. But as the Holy Spirit will give me utterance, we're going to present that in about two weeks on a Sunday. Praise God. Okay, back to Deuteronomy. Uh, if you can, if you choose to continue with this study with me, uh, I don't, basically, hey, did I offend anybody? You know, I really don't care if I offend anybody. As long as I'm teaching the Word of God, hey, later, if your feelings are hurt, your feelings are hurt, I'd rather you wake up and, 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 and repent than to have to face God and say, hey, Pastor Carter told me this. Now I'm hitting the hell because I got angry with him. I don't care if you get angry with me. Look, I'm going to preach what God gives me to preach because it was God who brought me out of the pits and out of the mire and out of the clay and set my feet on a solid rock. I'm grateful to God. It is God who's given me 77 years. It is God who put breath in my body and everything I have and, and, and will ever have belongs to him. But I love you guys. I love you so much I'm willing to tell, tell it like it is. And Jackie Carter looked at me and said, oh, Lord, help us. She's praying for me, y'all. She's praying. It's so good to have a praying wife. Andrew, it's so good to have a praying wife who doesn't know what the next words are going to be coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Chapter 9, remember the Lord. Chapter 10 is all about tables of stone. Uh, God gives Abraham, I mean, God gives Moses new, ta new tablets, new stone tablets. Chapter 10 is all about keep the commandments. And chapter 10 also has Lord of Lords and, and God of God, the Lord of Lords. Chapter 11, God's mighty acts. Don't forget God's mighty acts. This the whole book of Deuteronomy is all about Moses' rehearsal of the history of God bringing the people out of Egypt and what God has done and God is reminding them of what the Lord has done and Moses is reminding them of what God has done in his farewell address. Chapter 11, you need to read it, blessings or curse. Uh, blessings or curses, okay? And Deuteronomy later on when we get to uh, chapter 18, chapter 28, Deuteronomy is, is uh, really uh, looking at... Um, the blessings and the cursings, um, where God gave, gives people choices. See, I set before you this day blessings and cursing, healing and sickness. He, and God even says, choose the blessings. Chapter 12, destroy all idols. Destroy all idols. That doesn't mean you go out killing people if they're your political, leader, political leaders. No, no. You remove all 
idolatry out of your life. The Bible says, flee idolatry. You know, if, if, if I regard my wife higher than I regard God, she becomes an idol. Or if she regards me higher than she regards God, uh, then I become an idol. No, no idols. If, if, if your little baby, Andrew, takes up more of your time and attention than God, and your, your heart is on your baby more than it's on anything else, your baby becomes an idol. God does not want us to have idols. He wants us putting things in proper perspective. Now, when I was growing up, when I was a young man, and I was a young teenager, Tall, lean, and 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 and, and cool, calm, and copacetic. You know, good looking, and uh, all that. And and you know, I I I had a friend, and I do this too myself. I do this also. I had a friend. He'd stand in the mirror every day, and he'd say, "You good looking thing, don't you ever die?" You know, he idolized himself. And and you know, I hung out with him, so I I did that a little bit of that too. I've since repented. But God does not want us putting anything or any person before him. Chapter 13. I'm glad we can laugh on, on uh, 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 this, in this Bible study. I'm glad we can laugh at ourselves. I'm glad you can laugh at me. Praise God. I'm glad that I'm funny sometimes. Okay? Destroy all idols. Then it talks about eating blood is forbidden. You can't eat the blood of animals. God, we, we're to drain that blood, pour that blood out. Chapter 13, walking, walk after the Lord. Resist temptation. Powerful chapter 13. Chapter 14, clean and unclean. And then provision for the poor. Uh, we get a good uh, look at how we're to take care of the poor in chapter 14. Chapter 15, um, released in the seventh year. Released from bondage in the seventh year. That if a person was engaged in a contractual agreement as a servant, that person worked six years, and in the seventh year that person was released, and the, the, uh, the, the master gave money and the provisions to that person whom uh, he released. And, and it's all about release and release from bondage, release from debt. Um, and so there was a year of jubilee every 50th year, but there was also a release every 7th year. Chapter 16, the Passover observance. And to keep the Passover. Why uh, the Jews were to keep the Passover and the feast days. Chapter 17, judge fairly, judge fairly. Do you know in this country and in most nations, you can buy a judge a dime a dozen. You can get a judge here, a judge who do almost anything you want them to do. The judge will issue a, writ, a decree based on whatever your paycheck says for them to do. I mean, judges come a dime a dozen. But you know, the real judges, the first judges are mentioned Twice we've seen them mentioned already in Deuteronomy. The judges were the rulers. They had to be just. He who ruleth over men should be just. Ruling from the throne of God. That's the way God set it up. He who rules over men should be just. Ruling from the throne of God. Uh, the, this nation and the nations have gotten far away from from justice. But God is calling people back. God is going to call this nation and the nations back. Continue. I'm just giving an overview of Deuteronomy because I know we can't cover the whole thing tonight. Chapter 18, priestly payments. Priestly payments. The payments that were made to the priests. Uh, and then a prophet is promised. In chapter 18 of Deuteronomy, God says, I will raise up a prophet uh, from among you, like unto you, and and he tells who, what this prophet will do. He'll be uh, just. He'll be fair. He'll be godly. And uh, the, your your Bible will use the capital P for prophet because that prophet is it's a prophecy uh, about Jesus Christ. God will raise up a prophet among you, uh, um, from among you, and 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 he's the one. He's the one that's going to bring salvation. Chapter 19, cities of refuge. If a man accidentally killed another person and 
uh, before the, the avenger could get to him, the avenger is like the sheriff, the high sheriff, before the sheriff could catch up with him, if that man escaped to a city of refuge, he could have uh, protection until his trial came up. And so God gives the, uh, Moses the command to give to the Israelites cities of refuge. Chapter 20, courage for battle. I like chapter 20 where before they go into battle against the Amalekites, the priests give a charge to the people. The priests, the priests. Now the priests ain't going to be going into battle now. But the priests had a responsibility. The priests sought the Lord for your victory. And then the priests gave a command and the priests anointed the people and he charged them, be not afraid, don't be afraid. I mean, I mean, if you're going to go into battle, I mean, call the priest. I mean, uh, look, 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 look. I don't want a priest coming to me with some beads and uh, some jewelry around his neck and some beads and a, and a big old staff in his hand and a big old pole shaped like a cross. I want a priest who can pray, who can touch God. I want a priest who's going to say, God, shall he pursue? And God, will he be victorious? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, chapter 21. Uh, inheritance rules the inheritance rules chapter 22 various laws and marital guidelines God gives marital guidelines God does not wait until Romans chapter 7 was written or 1st Corinthians 1st Corinthians chapter 7 was written God gave marital guidelines in uh, chapter 22 you all need to read the read this chapter Chapter 23, Ritual Cleansing and Divorce Procedure. God allowed for divorce and he told, tells how a person can get a divorce and what procedure to go through. And then, and the Lord also, and you know, divorce is so prevalent in our society, about 60% of marriages end in divorce. Look, those of you who are married, stay married, stay married, love your spouse. Okay, work things out to the glory and honor of God. Let us all, I'm talking to me now, let us all humble ourselves before the Lord and, 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 and put an end to this divorce madness. You know, do you know the Bible even talks about if a man gave, gives his wife a bill of divorcement and she goes out and marries someone else and then he gives her a divorce paper and she comes back to her first husband uh, and he marries her, she's unclean. She's unclean, and he's unclean. So there are certain things that have to be done in order to get uh, that uncleanness taken, removed, removed from us. So um, very important instructions. So those, those Christians who don't read the Old Testament and say, I'm a New Testament Christian, they're missing out on the heart of God by not reading the Old Testament. Chapter 20, 24 uh, includes... Treatment of the poor and care for widows. How are we to treat the poor? How are we to care for widows? If a poor man, if a person comes up to, and, and you get them in every city. Uh, you got them in Ohio, Andrew. Uh, I mean, you stop at a red light and you see this sad looking man, sad looking woman come up to your vehicle. Uh, hey, brother, uh, can I borrow a dollar? Now, you know that the guy ain't ever going to pay you back that dollar. Can I borrow a dollar? And you've got to make a choice whether or not you're going to give that person a dollar. Or let's say you take your family into McDonald's. I mean, it's splurge night. It's the night on the town. You're going to Mickey D's. You're going to get a, a Big Mac and some fries. And then you're going to top it off with one of those delicious 60 cent, 59 cent McDonald's ice cream cones. I mean, that's a, hey, that's a good meal, Jack Carter. You know, because Jack, Jackie, Jackie's shaking her head. If, if you got your webcam on, and uh, I want to see more of you use your webcams, cause I, you know, cause I want to see more more faces, cause I can read Andrew's face, I can read Jackie's. Jackie said, "Here he goes with those McDonald's cones." Man, I'll take Jackie out. Come on, babe, let's go for a ride. Where are we going? Oh, it's a treat. I'll drive to McDonald's and get her an ice cream cone, <laughs> fifty nine cents a dollar if you're in Delaware. Okay, <laughs> and we're talking about good ice cream. How'd I get way out there? Bring me back. Anyway, uh, if the poor person looks and comes up to you while you're driving, and you're, you're stopping at the red light, and they're giving this big old story, you have a choice. 
You can you can <laughs> give something to that person whom you don't even know, or you can uh, say no and tell a lie. No, I don't have any money. Most of us we lie. No, I don't have any change. They ain't got no change, bro. No, bro. God bless you. And we can God bless somebody too till the sun goes down. We know how to God bless you. Well, God has let that person come to you so you can bless him or her. Come on, folks, wake up. The reason why that person chose you out of all those cars at the red light because God sent that person to you to see how you're going to respond. And so we, we blow them off. We say, God bless you. Okay, and keep on driving. In fact, we zoom away from the red light. Okay. And, and then you're going to find somebody sitting outside of McDonald's. He's sitting outside of McDonald's waiting on you, waiting on you to see what you're going to do. Hey, brother, uh, uh, can you treat me to some fries? Uh, hey, brother, you got an extra dollar? And, and, and uh, no, all I got is a card. Well, brother, can you get me something on your card? And, and, and it's up to you. It's your choice. I'm not telling you what choice to make, but it's your choice. But oftentimes God puts that person in your path to see how you're going to treat that person. And, and, but God did tell the Israelites through Moses in Moses' farewell address. Farewell address. Remember, you were a stranger in Egypt. Remember, you were a stranger in North Philly. Remember, Gene Bratton, you were a stranger in Chester, Pennsylvania. Chester, Pennsylvania. Remember, Jackie, you were a stranger in Augusta, Georgia. Okay, so uh, now look here. Now, I'm not saying that you all go out tomorrow looking for somebody at McDonald's so you can treat them. I'm not saying that. I am not saying. Some of you, see, I know some of you. You'll treat them and, and bring and, and, send the, and send the receipt to me here, Pastor Carter. Uh, <laughs> I treated somebody. That's what Jackie Carter would do. I treated this guy at, at Mickey D's. I spent five dollars and eighty-six cents. Here's the receipt. Reimburse me. Okay. Well, if you've got to do that, you go ahead and do that. Okay. Finishing up Deuteronomy. Care for widows in chapter twenty-four. We are to care for widows. You know, God has a very uh, wonderful heart for widows and and orphans. Chapter twenty-five. If a man dies. Uh, very important chapter to read in the Old Testament. If a man died and, and, and his wife did not have children, she was barren, and the, the, the husband died, well, in, in uh, Old Testament history, the, the next brother in line, the next of kin, uh, had the responsibility, and it was his choice to whether he would do it or not. To father a child through uh, the woman, and that child will be the child of the deceased brother. Now, now this next man, next next in line, had to be unmarried. Okay, had to be unmarried. We saw with Judah how Judah deceived his daughter-in-law, and she wound up deceiving him, and she got her children anyway. Uh, 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 not through Judah's deceased son, but through Judah. She dressed herself up. As a as a as a as a whore and as a harlot. Chapter twenty six: Just measures and then bless thy people. Um, so that's going to take us through chapter twenty six of Deuteronomy. Next week we go from chapter twenty seven through chapter thirty six, and we finish Deuteronomy, and we will finish the uh, Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible. Okay, praise God. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. I mean, the Old Testament, the entire Old Testament is wonderful. These be the words which Moses, Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness. Back in chapter 1, verse 1. There are eleven days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the fortieth year in the eleventh month on the first day of the month that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according to unto all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. After he had slain Zion, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtaroth in Edrei. Good history. I mean, you get documented, historical detail, time and date and place. On this side of Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, the Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in 
this mount. Turn you and turn your journey, take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto in the plain, in the hills, in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Those are the dimensions of, of what God had given to the Israelites. God said to Moses, you've been on this mountain long enough. You've been here for over a year. It's time to move out. You know, there's a message right there for you preachers. Dr. Gene Bratton, there's a message there. There's a message, Andrew. And you can tell the people, hey, you've been sitting under this ministry long enough. Now, it takes a bold preacher to preach this way. You've been sitting under my ministry long enough. Now, it's time for you to go out there and start your own work and start time to uh, get out there where the rubber meets the road. I mean, a lot of preachers won't do that. But if God says it's time to tell the people it's time for you to go out and start teaching, you to go out and feed the hungry, you go out and witness, you go door to door, you do street ministry, uh, uh, you start a prophetic ministry. But a lot of people are content with titles and positions with no real, no real commitment and no real uh, 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 things to do in the ministry. See, what you have, you have a lot of ministries. Where you, you have a lot of ministries where a lot of preachers are sitting under, and pastors love to have a lot of preachers under, you know, they call them my children. Man, don't come around me and talk about your children or, or your spiritual children. You ain't got no spiritual children. You did not produce them. You did not do anything. You talked to them about Jesus. You may have led them to the Lord, but they are not your spiritual children. You want to get me upset, you get some, I ain't going to go there. Some preacher talking about my spiritual children. Uh, my sons and my daughters. I remember a preacher in, in, in Philly years ago, 30 years ago. He had about 30 young men sitting up under him. All of them just as gay as could be. Mm. Call them his sons. They were all gay. Yes, they were all gay. And, 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 and he just touted them, touted them and, and flaunted them. My, my sons. And, and, and they were, Lord, it, it was pitiful. It was pitiful. I mean, some people like to build empires and manipulate other people. And you get it in, in lesbian churches, get it in gay churches. A whole lot of men sitting up. A whole lot of men sitting up. They ought to be out there preaching the gospel. Out, be out there feeding the hungry. But no, they're out there. Uh, they're sitting up under this preacher, acting like women. You know, they they were born men, but acting like women. It's an it's an it's an abomination to the Lord. And, and, and the people who flaunt this and, and, and promote this, and they have large congregations, ladies and gentlemen, large congregations, because those like spirits attract one another. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please. I'm the kind of person, uh, if God says time, uh, 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 it's time to tell Sister Jackie, okay, Sister Jackie, it's time for you to go on out there in ministry. I'm going to tell her. Now, whether she goes or not, that's up to her. And I know Jackie right now. Jackie said, well, uh, I'm going to wait to hear him pray. tell me. Okay, you wait. He will tell you. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Jackie, but I'm the kind of person. If God says to me, tell your son it's time it's time for him to start hearing the Lord and do it, I'm going to tell him it's time for you to hear the Lord. It's up to you to make the choice, make the decision. I remember my, my first church in Chester, Dr. Jean, before we met you. We yeah. had a whole lot of people. I mean, we had Bible study packed up every Wednesday night. People coming to Bible study, church service. And that little church on the corner, uh, people standing out in the, in, the, in, the, in the street, chairs out on the sidewalk, speakers mm -hmm. coming out the windows so that people could hear the word. And they loved it. They loved it. Uh, as long as they were getting fed, Dr. Jean. Mm -hmm. But when it came yes. time, when it came time, when the Lord said, okay, Here's how I want you to divide the congregation into groups. Okay, divide them into tribes. Okay, Issachar is uh, going to do the food ministry. And Zebulon is going to do the street, the track ministry, door-to-door -door ministry, going door-to-door, -door, giving out tracks. I'll tell you, when we outline that, you know the next Sunday the church is about half empty. <laughs> 
and then a couple more Sundays on a handful of us because the people, they love being fed. But when it came to, I mean, actually living like a Christian, going out there, acting, putting into effect what you've learned. I mean, you want to empty your church, pastor? You want to empty your church? Designate some responsibilities to some people. And you'll see, you'll see, you'll see how popular you are. You see how many yeah. spiritual children, how many spiritual children you still have. Praise God. I know I'm supposed to be teaching Deuteronomy, but we're also teaching some practical things tonight. God said it's time for you to get off this mountain and into the valley. And they were only 11 days away from entering into the promised land. Verse 8, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess it. The land which the Lord sware to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And so that's chapter 1, um, a portion of chapter 1. And then Israel, <coughs> some of them, they were hard-headed. They had missed the promise. They rebelled against God. And they, and God told them, don't go against the, the enemy. They will wipe you out. And these people went anyhow, and they were defeated by the enemy. And uh, the Amorites beat them, defeated them. So, verse 45 of chapter 1. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. Wow. Wow. When reading this, you can see that there are times we can cry to the Lord and we can weep, we can bawl and squall, squall we can boo-hoo, and God is not going to hear us. You know, every tear does not turn God's heart. God, God doesn't fall for every tear. Okay? Uh, we know how to use tears. We know how to use bawling and squalling and all of this. Uh, but God's heart is not always touched by tears. If, if, if you're uh, rebellious against God and refuse to do what God says do, and God's going to make it hard on you, and you're going to have to cry. But God is looking for a, a heart that is rent in repentance. Tears can, tears can uh, uh, cover a lot of things. Tears can cover the, the real scene, but the real... Uh, Tears are the circumcision of the foreskin of the heart. Cut that flesh off from that hard heart and repent and do the works of God. That's the kind of tears that God uh, honors. Chapter 2, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And command thou the people, saying, You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. Verse 3, Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. And so um, they did not get favor from their own cousins in Mount Seir. Later on, uh, God visited those, those people, the Moabites, and brought destruction upon them because they would not let Israel pass. Then, as, as, as Moses led them in the journeys, and he's rehearsing these journeys with the people because it's his farewell address, he talks about a king that they came up upon named um, Zion, uh, S-I-H-O-N, Verse 20, that also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old times. And the Ammonites called them Zamzu, Zamzumims, a great people, and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them <coughs> and dwelt in their stead. And so, uh, verse 20, and I sent messengers out of the wilderness of uh, Kadamoth unto Zion king of Heshbon with the words of peace saying let me pass through thy land I will go along by the highway I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left but Zion king of Heshbon verse 30 would not let us pass by him 
For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate that he might deliver him unto thy hand as appeareth this day. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to give Zion and his land before thee. Begin to possess that thou mayest inherit the land. Then Zion, verse 32, Zion the king of Heshbon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain. You may say, ladies and gentlemen, and you may hear a lot of people say, well, God is unfair, he's unjust, unjust because he killed the children too. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> God commanded that these children be put to death along with the husbands and wives because children uh, of ungodly people uh, without God will grow up to be ungodly men and women. They will be worse than their parents. And God commanded that they all be destroyed. God commanded Joshua when he went into the promised land, utterly destroy the people in that land. Don't intermarry with them. Uh, uh, don't make any agreements or pacts with them. Utterly destroy them because they are an abominable people. And because the Israelites got into the new land and they became comfortable, they did not utterly destroy the people there. And to this day, we are having difficulty, great difficulty, with the children of the, the descendants of the people God commanded to be destroyed back in that day. We're almost finished. Only 20 more, four more chapters to go, and I, we can do this in four more minutes. Then we turned and went the way to Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came up out against us, he and all his people. The Lord said in verse 2, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also, the king of Bashan and all his people, and we smote him until none was left to him remaining. And so Israel was getting a reputation, ladies and gentlemen, because the Lord fought for them. And America has a great reputation because in previous wars, most of our previous wars, the Lord fought for us. World War I, we had to come against uh, uh, great demons of oppression. And <coughs> America's entry into World War I helped save the world. World War II against Nazi Germany and the fascists in Italy and, 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 and the fatalists in Japan. If America had not been involved in that war, if we had not had favor by the Lord, uh, this world would be most messed up. But since then, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we have lost our sense of who God is. We have lost our calling. And um, we, we uh, don't honor the Lord as we used to. So we need to get back to God and get back to what we ought to be doing. If we're going to be a great people, then we've got to obey the Lord and humble ourselves before the Lord. The world doesn't trust us now. This same nation that helped deliver so many people, including Russia, including France and England, the world does not trust us because they don't know where we stand. And because America has allowed so much ungodliness to come into this nation, so much idolatry. And so judgment, ladies and gentlemen, judgment, judgment has to come. It has to come, but we must tell people while we can to get saved and stay saved. Get saved and stay saved. Okay, as we continue, um, chapter 4, the faithful survive, people of inheritance, the covenant is recalled in chapter 4. Chapter 5, God's commandments. When you look at chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, it's almost like reading Exodus chapter 20 all over again. 
Moses reminded them of God's powerful voice and why we have why we have preachers today instead of God speaking to us. The people could not stand to have God speak to him uh, uh, personally, directly. And so God speaks through someone he chooses to speak through. That is why we have preachers. We have prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, be very careful that the voice you're listening to is the voice of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you check out these prophets or these so-called prophets. I don't care how many videos they've made. I don't care how large their church is. If they're not preaching the word of God, you need to check them out. Be careful who you follow. Be very careful. And I'm going to be preaching soon about of the danger of idolatry. How idolatry is so prevalent in America. I mean, I mean, there are many people that go to the same church every Sunday, Sunday after Sunday, and and if you tell them, well, you know, you're 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 you're, you're worshiping idols, uh, they will fight you to the teeth. And then uh, some of these same people who are very powerful and, and, and have powerful political connections. They need to be very careful that their political connections are not taking them over into the realm of idolatry. Because when we get to the point where we would rather listen to a political person or a, 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 a another person other than God, and we, we, we uh, direct our lives based on what he says or she says or what he thinks or what she thinks, and we ignore what God says. That is idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. It's abomination. Okay. God wants us to be holy. Um, he wants us to remember him. Blessing or curse. Chapter 11. Read that chapter. Blessings <coughs> or curse. Very important chapter. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul. Chapter uh, 11 verse 18. And bind them for a sign upon your head. That they may be, at, be, may be as frontlets between your eyes. In the Old Testament days. The Jewish Jews had to wear frontlets. These were like little boxes that they would tie to their foreheads or tied to their elbows, or tied to their arms. And the reason why they tied these little boxes, and these boxes contained scriptures, contained the word of God, because God wanted the people always to have his word before them. Now you would laugh, you would laugh, you and I, we would laugh today if we saw people walking down the street, and they have these frontlets on their foreheads, little bo leather boxes tied to their foreheads, and uh, little boxes on their arms, we would laugh at them and call them, call them, call them freaks or crazy. But, ladies and gentlemen, if that's the best way to keep the word of God before you, uh, have a little box on your arm, and every time you touch it, remind you of what the word of God says. Whatever's going to help you to stay in the word of God and be led by the word of God. I'm not talking about showmanship or 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 fronting or trying to present yourself as being holy and religious. Too many people do that. But we're talking about walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Word of God. Um, concerning what we eat. God mentions many things that we are to eat and what we're not to eat. And uh, we're not to eat anything that has blood in it. Okay, we're not to eat blood. And uh, so we're to make sure that what we eat is clean. Okay, and uh, walk after the Lord, resist temptation, make provision for the poor. If you've got a garden and you've got a whole lot of veggies, leave some veggies for the poor. Okay, leave some veggies for the poor. I'm just planting my fall and winter garden uh, this week. Had to wait until the drought was over. Got some good old greens. They're healthy looking and strong. And uh, pretty soon, and the people in the church, the people in the church, uh, uh, I call it Jackie's folks. Man, they just waiting. They just waiting. They're just waiting. Uh, they're my friends too, but they keep they keep sending her messages. When when are the greens gonna be ready? How's the garden coming along? 
because they know they're, they're going to get plenty of greens from my garden. And uh, I'll, I'm glad to share with them. Okay? The Bible tells us don't pick every piece of fruit that you're growing. Leave some for the poor. Don't pick every apple. Don't pick every, pick every ear of corn. Leave some for the poor. And then share what the Lord has given you with others. Okay, Passover observance. That's in chapter 15. Judge fairly, chapter 17. We've done a lot with feast days, chapter 16. And chapter 18, a prophet promised. Verse 15 says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, for I die that I die not. The people were so afraid. Moses reminded them, You were so afraid when God spoke to you directly, and that you said, uh, tell God not to speak to us again directly. And God promised that he would raise up a prophet among them. And his voice would they uh, pay attention to. Okay. So uh, that's about as far as we're going to go this week. Um, please read about those divor the divorce procedure. Chapter 23. Divorce procedure. And... Um, how God uh, allowed a man to give a, write, a writing of divorcement to his wife. But then there were certain responsibilities. Certain responsibilities. And if, if a man did it out of spite, he was, he was to be stoned, stoned to death. If he falsely accused his wife, he was to be stoned to death. Ladies and gentlemen, these laws were very, very serious laws. If a person did not obey God and, and practice ungodliness, the person could be stoned to death. If a child cursed his mother and father, or one of the above, the parents could take that child to the elders at the gate and release that child to the elders, and the elders would have that child stoned to death. Think about the num number of people today who have no respect for their parents, who talk to them anyway, treat them anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, in Old Testament times, they would be dead. You'll say, well, I'm glad I'm not living in those times. But you know what? God has not changed. God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And God, the guidelines He gives us in the Old Testament, God still requires us to live holy and righteous and to treat people justly and fairly. Even in Deuteronomy, uh, we read, um, we read a verse, uh, what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to live uh, justly before the Lord. And so uh, these teachings are very, very important, very, very uh, uh, important to our instruction and our development and our relationship, not only with the Lord, but with one another. I hope you're getting something out of your Bible. Read it uh, every day. Read some of your Bible every day. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't sleep, you have having trouble sleeping, read the Bible. If you can't sleep, you're troubled. Open your Bible and read Psalm 91. Just keep reading it over and over again. And you'll wake up in the morning, your Bible's still on your bed. And you, you, I mean, you can hear yourself snoring after a certain point. The Bible. I'm not saying read the Bible in order to get to sleep. But if you can't sleep, you can read the Bible to calm your spirit. Praise God. Well, bless God. Bless God. I love the Word of God. I love the Lord. I love you all. And I thank God from the bottom of my heart, from the depths of my heart, that He's called me to be a preacher, a teacher of His Word. And I thank Him for the Holy Spirit and for enabling us, for enabling us all to come together and to share with one another. Thank you for your time. And I'm going to ask Jack and Jean if they have identified anything that we need to pay attention to in the chat window. Any questions, any problems, anything that we need to comment on. 
I like a comment uh, uh, Jackie made um, when you spoke, Pastor Carter, of children disrespecting their parents. Jackie wrote, this is why a lot of young people are dying so young. They don't respect their parents. Yes, 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 yes. Dr. Jean, you nailed it. Jackie, you nailed it. Kids are being killed on a daily basis because of disrespect. Ladies and gentlemen, I think about the number of kids who are in rebellion, run away from home, and you never hear from them again. Well, it's sad. It's tragic. But they should have mm -hmm. stayed at home. You see, mm -hmm. you see, you see, listen, uh, if, if, if we, God has a hedge of protection, an umbrella around every one of us. And as long as we're under the authority God has set over us, God will bless us. But we, when we get out from under that authority, for example, when a husband disrespects a wife and goes and commits adultery, he is no longer under God's umbrella of protection. He also can expose his family to a lot. Same thing with the wife. Or if a child disobeys his or her parents and, and the parents say, no, you can't go out for a week. You can't go out with your friends. You come home from school and this, and the child sneaks out of the house and goes to McDonald's to get one of those famous ice cream cones and gets hit by a car on the way back. It's because of disobedience. Disobedience has its rewards, ladies and gentlemen. And God, Dr. Gene, God blesses us based on our obedience to him. God has put certain people over our lives. You cannot disrespect the police. When the police say stop, you ought to stop. My daddy told me when I was a little kid, when a policeman says stop, you stop. Don't blow your nose. Don't scratch your behind. Don't touch your face. Don't, lift, don't move your arms. Freeze. My daddy told me to freeze. He said, because if you don't, they will kill you. He said, the police mentality, they will kill you. And we're seeing this all over the place. And then we're seeing mm -hmm. people disrespecting the police. If you throw a rotten apple at a, at a cop, cop ain't going to throw a rotten apple back at you. He's going to blow your face off with his gun. And so disrespect, rebellion has its rewards, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. There are certain yeah. families, you'll notice that it runs in certain families. Every generation loses somebody because that, there's a, that disrespect in that family. It goes on and on and on. Good point, Jackie. Good point, Jean. Uh, Andrew has a question. Andrew? Yeah, uh, I actually had a question, and then um, I actually had something to share that happened to me today I thought was pretty cool. Um, but my question was, in Deuteronomy 18, is it when it refers, when God tells him that he would raise a prophet up, um, when Jesus was walking the earth, uh, they ended up asking him the question, like, are you the prophet? Um, it, was that what they were looking for, like oh. that prophet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They were looking all their lives. They're looking for that prophet because... The Jews knew their scriptures, Andrew. They knew the scriptures. Yeah. I mean, they were re that the scriptures were rehearsed in their homes, everywhere they went. They were taught the scriptures. The average Jewish person knew the scriptures, and and they were waiting for that prophet. Yes, but the problem was when Jesus came, they did not accept him. <laughs> they didn't accept him, and and and. And uh, even though God gave signs and wonders, the, average, the majority of the Jews did not accept him. And, uh, but yes, you're correct. Okay. Yeah, I always wondered that because I'd read that in the New Testament, and I was like, uh, they would ask, uh, ask that question, are you the prophet that is to come? And uh, I always wondered about that, like what, what prophet were they referring to? Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, yes. It's another... Mm -hmm. Just another uh, Jesus uh, fulfillment in the Old Testament. It's really cool to see how many times he was in the Old Testament. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, I just saw little Jeremiah. <laughs> We're talking about it's prophets. And here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you all need to have your webcams on. Hi, Jeremiah. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. 
Let's pray, everybody, let's pray for this family right now. Let's pray for this family right now. Okay. Okay. Aww. Father God, we thank you for the Hawkins family. Thank you for Andrew and Cheryl and Andrea and Jeremiah. And we ask that you bless them, Lord. Bless this household. Bless each and every one of them. Keep uh, Cheryl healthy and strong. Andrew healthy and strong. Bless the baby. Help the baby grow healthy and strong. And bless the big sister, Cheryl, Andrea, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Meet every need they have and use this family to the praise of your glory. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Thank God. you, Dr. Carter. And Cheryl, you didn't have to get in the picture, but that's the, we're praying for you anyway. <laughs> My <laughs> hair is crazy right now. <laughs> Mine too, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. We love you guys. Anybody you. else, Jackie? Jean, anyone else? Nope. I like Dustina. Dustina, Dustina talks about raising children. And uh, disobedience. I know, I know, I know the children in Dustina also are obedient, okay? Because Dustina don't play. Sister girl doesn't play, okay? Dustina's old school. She doesn't play. Dustina, years ago, my mama would say, if you don't do what I said do, I'm going to smack the taste right out of your mouth. Man, and mama would do that, you know? And so, and uh, praise God. Uh, Nathan and Destiny and, 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 and Nikki, y'all be good. Y'all listen to your mama. Okay, that's about it for the, tonight. I'd like to enjoy, uh, invite you to join us next Sunday morning, if you can, for the online church. And um, same connection as we use here. And then next week we want to finish up the book of Deuteronomy with chapters 27 through 36. And then uh, the final, final week, the final instructions for this semester. You all have done very, very well. Praise God, very well. And I enjoy, I enjoy correcting Jackie Carter's homework papers, and uh, <laughs> she, she's doing a good job. I mean, I mean, Jackie's, uh, I'm enjoying her homework paper. Jean, she's doing it. She's a student. She's a student. <laughs> And, and she she working hard to get those assignments. She you know her husband won't even give her a break. You know she got to have her <laughs> assignments in on time too. But you all continue to <laughs> let the Lord bless you, and Father bless each and every one, every household, every family. Meet every need. Keep everyone in excellent health. We love you. We thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the online Bible study. Thank you for those who are are receiving this via the recording. And all over the world, they're hearing these recordings. We pray that people get a hunger for you, Lord, and a hunger and thirst after righteousness and for your word, and that you will meet every need. Lord, we pray that if anyone is listening who is not saved, that they would give their hearts to Jesus and receive him as Savior and Lord. And we give you the praise. Uh, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.